We live in a world that has turned into a global village. You can meet people from all parts of the world wherever you go. And this cultural diversity is crucial for people to come close to each other. Unfortunately, we still have the menace of racism alive and kicking. Even sports is not free from this racism problem. Even in cricket, we hear of incidents where people have had past racist comments. That is quite natural. You have a lot of people playing the game and people will have that kind of mindset. Just because somebody is great with a bat or can really swing the ball, it doesn't mean that they will be good people too. Unfortunately, sometimes some really good players will be extremely inconsiderate human beings. As long as the problem is at an individual level, it's understandable. When it becomes an organizational problem where not only racism is tolerated, but almost encouraged, there's a serious, serious problem. You probably have heard the news about Azim Rafiq's allegations of racism from his former club, Yorkshire. Yorkshire is one of the top counties in English county circuit and has produced some of the finest players that have played for England, be it Jeffrey Boycott, Bob Willis, and former captain Michael Vaughan. When Azim Rafi came forward last year, you could feel a sense of institutionalized racism in Yorkshire County Cricket Club. Rafiq was born in Karachi and he was 10 years old when he moved to UK. He was a part of Yorkshire from 2008 to 2018. He also captained England's under-19 cricket team that had names like Joe Root and Josh Butler. He also captained 60-20 matches successfully for Yorkshire and was their youngest captain ever. Last year, he made revelations that he was racially harassed. After the allegations, Yorkshire started an investigation into the whole matter, which took forever to conclude. And Yorkshire has made it a point to not make this report public. Now, it was an independent investigation and it found out that there was indeed racism and uh, there were uh, some really bad things going on. But the club has decided not to punish anyone. They have not held anyone responsible. Now, Azim Rafiq says that he contemplated suicide at one point in time. He was called a parkie by Gary Balance, a former England player, and who calls him a very good friend, by the way. He has since shown remorse. Of what he has said. Yorkshire has denied that there is institutionalized racism in its ranks. If we go into a little history of Yorkshire Cricket Club, we find some things very interesting. First and foremost, until 1992, anyone who was not born in Yorkshire could not represent Yorkshire. That essentially meant that anyone born in England, if they are not born in the county, would not represent them. Sachin Tendulkar was a first overseas player followed by Shahid Afridi. A lot of other players have since represented the county. In another shocking twist, it's also suggested that former captain Michael Vaughan also passed some racial comments about Asian players, something that he denies, but Rana Navidul Hassan has also confirmed that the incident indeed took place. He said something on the lines of there were too many Asians in the team. Now, Yorkshire is going to obviously bear the brunt of this whole situation. The DCMS in UK is investigating the whole thing and uh, there will be interviews from Azim Rafiq and a lot of executives from Yorkshire County Cricket Club. ECB has actually suspended Yorkshire from hosting important matches as well as international matches until they have their own investigation. A number of sponsors have decided to discontinue their deals or not renew them when the contract runs out. This will obviously have a financial bearing on the county, but given the toxic culture, I think it's just a slap on the wrist. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop here. An unnamed former academy player at Yorkshire has accused of being severely abused at the county. It wasn't just limited to really bad comments, but in fact, he's actually said, and this is very unfortunate that I have to repeat this, that a senior player actually urinated at his head. He also said that racial comments were a part and parcel of his everyday, and the coaches knew about it, but did nothing. And some of the players even threw the balls really hard at him from a short distance, which would eventually leave his hands bruised. And I believe that there is an investigation that's going to take place. The chairperson of the club, Roger Hutton, has resigned. 
and he will also be a part of the DCMS investigation. Hopefully the second event, which is as unfortunate as the first one, if not more, will be thoroughly investigated and one really hopes that the people responsible here will be punished. Now, many British politicians and even the Prime Minister Boris Johnson have condemned this kind of attitude and they've actually called for an investigation and people responsible to be punished for their actions. I think it's safe to assume that Yorkshire has a pretty toxic culture that needs to improve. It is also critical that Yorkshire executives take responsibility and fix the matters. If they're going to keep on denying this and basically say that there is no institutionalized racism, then it's not going to fix things. They also need to face the truth and put out that report and own up to their poor actions. This is the only way for them towards redemption. If they're going to just dodge the ball, this will come back and bite them a lot harder than before. We can only hope that we will see the end of racism sometime soon, or at least people will be careful passing such hurtful and hateful comments. Just to conclude, I was reminded of the 1997 tour of Queen Elizabeth II to India and Pakistan. She came to Pakistan where she was given a lot of good hospitality. She enjoyed her trip and went to India. In India, there was a group of Sikhs that protested while she was visiting there, asking her to apologize for the Jallianwala Bagh incident. Now, if you're not aware of the incident, there was a political protest taking place at Jallianwala Bagh when the British were the colonial rulers over here in subcontinent. And the British armed forces came in and fired straight at these political protesters. Hundreds of Sikhs and Muslims were killed within that place within a few hours. Some historians put the number at as high as 2000. When this whole apology demand was put forward, the Queen said that it's an unfortunate incident but did not apologize. Somewhere, somehow, you see some resemblance. Yes, there were racial comments. Yes, it was bad. But we are not going to punish anyone. We are not sorry. Or we are just sorry. Maybe this is a societal thing that needs to improve for a better world.